why am I doing this? Why do I do what I do? And challenging yourself a little bit in that space of slowing down. And then what happens there is you start to get a bit more clarity on what you want to do next or what an ideal tomorrow looks like. Welcome everyone to the Mind Valley podcast. This episode is called How to Thrive After Redundancy. The world's going through a major shakeup right now. Some people, some of you listeners out there might be going through a change in your career. Maybe you're thinking about leaving your job. Maybe you were made redundant. Maybe something happened to your company um, as a result of this pandemic and you no longer have that sense of security. I know how stressful and crazy it can be. I've been fired at least twice in my life. And today our guest is gonna be talking precisely about why being made redundant or losing your job could well be the best thing that ever happened to you. Her name is Eleanor Tweddle, and her book is called Why Losing Your Job Could Be the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You. What an appropriate title for a book. And the subtitle is Five Simple Steps to Thrive After Redundancy. So Eleanor, welcome to the Mind Valley Podcast. Thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure. Why would you say this topic is so relevant right now, Eleanor? Yeah, in one respect, it's a bit of an odd one, isn't it? You know, lots of people losing their job, going through struggle, and I'm busily going out there telling people, hey, this is a good thing. And that's not actually quite the message. It's actually a message of hope. I kind of want the book to feel like people lose their job or a career door is closing and they hold on to the book and think right maybe something good can come out of this so it's more a a book trying to persuade people that from struggle you can actually find positive messages optimism and opportunity so that's kind of what the book is all about so if one were to lose their job or if someone knows that they are in a scenario where job security isn't there. What are these five steps? Could you give us a quick overview on the simple steps that thrive after redundancy? Yeah, so the five steps were, um, I actually created them when I lost my job a couple of years ago. And what I realized I was doing was I pushed straight into finding a solution. So I lost my job, panicked, and I tried to find a solution really quickly. And I did things like jumped on LinkedIn, and press the apply button 400 times for jobs I didn't want. And then surprise, surprise, you get rejected from jobs you didn't want. And you start this kind of whirlwind of despair and you lose your confidence. And I just slowed all this down and thought, what am I doing? So I stopped. And what I realized was I hadn't taken a little bit of time just to slow down my thinking, think about what I wanted. And so these steps, are trying to help people through this process. So the first one is around shock. And if I'm gonna be honest, I didn't do this very well. <laughs> so I lost my job and I pushed through. I didn't say goodbye very well to what the door was closing. And I didn't acknowledge that actually I probably was going through quite a lot of emotions. So shock is the first step, really acknowledge that you have lost something and it's fine to grieve, and it's fine to feel all the emotions. And if you say goodbye well, that creates a really nice space of energy to then turn around and face that next door that you're about to go through. So that's kind of the first step. So that's the first step, right? But, but what if you feel you are unfairly laid off? Or what if you are laid off um, in circumstances which, which you don't you don't feel well legit. What do you do then? Do you still really try to just pretend it's all good? Do you go and slam your employer? Do you bring a <laughs> lawyer in? That, that is the whole part of shock. And I think what people do is they get mixed up in emotions. I kind of call it, you know, we all know the beautiful change curve of Elizabeth Kuber Ross, where you have, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of denial and you come through it. I, can't, I call it a spaghetti bowl. So all those emotions that you're going through is like one minute you're excited, next minute you're hugely frustrated, the next minute you're angry, the next minute you kind of try and find some hope. This spaghetti ball of emotions. And the first step of shock is embracing that and saying, well, that's okay. Now I'm going through something here. I've lost something. It's okay to feel it all. 
But once you've done that wallowing, once you've done that grieving and you feel in a good place, then that's when you can move on. But yeah, I think if you feel like you've been, um, you haven't been treated well, then you have to kind of go through that process of, okay, but now is your ownership of what happens next. So is it really helping that you're losing energy, you're losing your valuable thoughts and, and time now on something that's been in the past? So I would say to people, just really sit with what's best for me right now mm -hmm. and actually get a bit selfish with your thoughts. I love that. Okay, so that that is, so, I, and I love that you brought in the Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. So that is the first step. And again, for those of you who are joining late, we are talking about the book, Why Losing Your Job Could Be the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You. First step. So the first step is understand the stages of grief. How many stages are there in the Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kubler model? Yeah, it depends which one you read, but there's, there's six. Right. Yeah. Um, but I kind of think, yeah, there's probably about uh, 25 emotions that we go through maybe in an hour, in a minute, in a day, <laughs> in reality. Yeah. Well, it's an upheaval, right? It's an upheaval. It, it's a loss exactly. of a sense of identity. Yeah. So many of us associate ourselves yeah. with our jobs and so yeah. on. And so it's, it's normal to go through all of that and to experience that. Yeah. Now, exactly. take us to step two. What is step two about? So step two is that moment when you kind of think, right, OK, I've kind of got through this and the spaghetti bowl starts to unravel a little bit, starts to feel a little bit more linear. And you start to think, OK, I'm going to take a breath and maybe now I just feel stuck. OK, I've, I've, I'm at terms with what's happened. I accept what's happened. Now I feel stuck. Now what do I do? So it's the moment you ask yourself, what next? And I say in this space, this is when you start to not dive into action, but really ask yourself, what do I want and what do I need? And it's two really different questions and start separating them out. So the need side, really do your financials, really do your checking with your health, checking with everything that you need to do and know exactly how much money you need, buy when, and really set yourself some really clear things that, okay, I need this and be clear on your foundation. Again, what a lot of people do is they just assume and they push through and they don't really have a target. They're not clear on by this date, I need to earn X. And so they're kind of like in a worry state without having a clear thinking of what's, what they're trying to aim for. So that's the need, be clear on what you need. And then you can then create space for what you want, which is more about exploring. And stuff is around exploring possibility, allowing yourself to dream big. What if this is an amazing opportunity? What if something amazing happens to me because of this? And you start putting these hopeful thoughts into your mind. Amazing. I really like that tip. Um, when I advise people from moving to being an entrepreneur, I always tell them to calculate your minimal livable income, your MLI. Mm -hmm. Your minimal livable income is exactly how much you need to, 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 to survive yeah. okay, at a reasonable standard of living. Um, so that you can find your next job or build your future company. I remember when I quit my job, I was living in New York. I had a, a, a wife back then, uh, my ex, and she was European and she couldn't legally work in the US. And so I remember calculating based on my rent. My rent was 2007. Uh, New York is expensive, right? And then I remember <laughs> calculating that we needed $4,000 a month to survive, to have enough food in the table, to, to you know, bear, to pay into that bills, to, to go and watch a movie every Saturday. And um, that number, my MLI, mm. my minimal livable income, gave me the marker mm. to, to, to know what to look for, whether it was to start my own business, to freelance, or to get a job. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's something we don't do enough sort of work on and, and so we immediately just try and solve something knowing what we've known in the past. So quite a lot of people will just say, well, I earned this before. This must be what I can earn now or maybe less because you restart devaluating ourselves in the stress zone when we're trying to stress. We think, oh, I just need to take a job. So I'll sort of compromise on some things. So right. if you've so set you yourself say, that. What mm. you're saying, go slow. Yeah. Go slow. Don't just rush into the first job that you get. Go slow. And, and, and understand what your needs truly are. Yes, yeah. And you'll actually get closer to what you really want by doing that. So I do get a bit of pushback from people saying, well, I haven't got time for all of this great right. thinking, quality stuff. I've got to solve this. I've got bills to pay. But you'll actually get what you need quicker 
if you just do a little bit of thinking, maybe it's just 10 minutes every day over a cup of coffee where you just think and sit and go, right, what am I doing today? How am I using my time in the best possible way? What do I need to solve? Because as I said, I think a lot of us just jump straight into panic and we operate from a panic zone. So it actually makes us feel like we're a little bit like when a car gets stuck in mud. You know, you're pushing down on that accelerator, trying to get out and it's actually making you more stuck. You just slow it down. Think about your strategy. Think about you, what you really need. And when you go for it, you'll go for that job that you really want and need and you'll put all your energy into it and that energy will come through and that application will match. And that's what the, the difference between, you know, really knowing what you want and putting energy behind something. I love that. So the first step is let yourself go through the spaghetti bowl of emotions. The second step is take your time and truly understand what you need. Now I'm looking at the comments which are coming up and these are really interesting. Zainab just said, I spent my life working to get the job that I now hate. And I realized that it was actually my father's dream planted mm. in me, right? And I think so many of us do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we jump on the first job without truly yeah. understanding ourselves. And Camille, Camille said this, I was made redundant at the end of February, 2021. At that time, I was looking for inspiration for a new experience and I found Eleanor's book. It gave me a lot of sol solitude and guidance on how to let myself process what I'm going through and how I'm feeling about it. What I liked most was giving myself time to digest, ask myself important questions, to have some rest, and to be mindful about not falling into the rabbit hole of social media and Netflix. So thank you for sharing, Camille. Yeah, thank you, Camille. That's really lovely. That's great. That's exactly what I'd love people to do. <laughs> so what about step three? Yes, yeah, so step three is the slow, slow go. And I think I did this very badly again. So my book is written mostly on things that I did very badly. And then, you know, retrospectively fit it all in the book and thought, well, what should I have actually done? Slowing down to get clarity on the not just what do I want? What do I really want to happen? But why as well? And it's, you know, we all know the big kind of why and meaning of life and purpose can feel a bit overwhelming, but it's just, okay, why do I want to do this right now? And it's just asking you questions, a little bit like what Camille has just said, actually. Why am I doing this? Why do I do what I do? And challenging yourself a little bit in that space of slowing down. And then what happens there is you start to get a bit more clarity on what you want to do next or what an ideal tomorrow looks like. And I ask people to really think about that. So if everything came true for you tomorrow, like you just woke up and you're like, wow, that's amazing what happens in your ideal tomorrow. So slow, slow go is around really playing in that space of ideal thinking. If everything happened, what's happening? What am I doing? Who am I working with? Who am I working for? You know, all of those sort of things and visualizing them. And then when you go, which is the final bit, you slow, slow, and then you go, you can actually point your energy where you're going to actually get closer to your ideal tomorrow. Beautiful. Could you, could you help us understand the distinction between step two and step three? Mm. So step two, to me, is like stirring it all up. You're free thinking. You're allowing yourself to just go exploring, get curious. It's like you've had some really nice steady water. The water's now started to get cloudy. And because you're doing it, you're disrupting your thinking. And that's why I think when you lose your job, it's a good opportunity because you don't have to worry that you've taken that decision. You know, you're not the one that's, you know, having to decide, am I going to create change? Somebody else has done that for you. So actually, all you need to do now is stir up your ideas and think, what if? What if I could do something else? And you're stirring it all up. So step two is stirring up the ideas, dreaming big, thinking ridiculous ideas, doing brave things. And then step three is just slowing it all down because otherwise it become, can come quite overwhelming and you think, oh my goodness, I want to start a job. I, I want to uh, start a business, a movement, a community. What am I going to do? And so slowing it all down to get clarity now on what are the things that are sticking in my mind? What are the things that are coming to surface that really matter to me, not just in my career, but actually in life? And okay, what am I going to do about this? So that's the, the step from two to three. I see. Now let's go on to step four. Step four is probably where we all jump straight into. So lose job, get into action, solve this problem. So step four, becoming unstuck, 
is around, okay, now it's time to get really intentional with what I'm doing. So every day I challenge people to do one thing really, really well. Like put your heart and soul into it, but just again, really uh, be focused on what are you doing? How is it contributing to where you want to get to? And being mindful of distractions, things that maybe aren't contributing. So unstuck is all about being planning and planned and organized in your thinking. It's about thinking about the people around you and the right people, because quite a lot of us have people around us saying, oh my goodness, you need to get a job, or what are you doing that for? Or have you got a job yet? And it becomes a noise. So it's about being tuning into the people around us and who's helping us and who's holding us back. And the final thing is thinking of your story. So every time somebody comes along and says, oh, how are you doing? I heard you lost your job, how's things? You now know your story and your message and you share it with them and they become part of helping you solve the problem. They, they will then start thinking, oh yes, Eleanor is trying to set up as a writer. Okay, yeah, next time they hear about a vacancy for a writer, oh yeah, I know somebody. So it's about your story and you start spreading out, okay, this is what I wanna be doing and, and getting other people to help you. Beautiful, and now let's go on to step five. So the final one, Thrive, um, maybe isn't quite that, okay, you know, you've solved all the problems, you lost your job, and now you're gonna start a multi-million pound business. It's not quite that. Thrive is more around understanding that when you are making big changes in your life, things are going to happen. This is, this is what I know for certain. You're going to fail at some things. You are going to get rejected. You're going to make mistakes. And that is all part of thriving. Knowing that all of this stuff that's going to come at you because there's changes in your life is all part of it. And you're, you're okay with that. You're going to deal with it. You're going to go, okay, I got rejected, but that's fine. It might be a redirection. It maybe wasn't for me. I'll just move on. Okay. I tried something. I failed. It didn't work out all right, that's fine. At least I've tried. So actually Thrive is all around creating a toolkit for you to keep going and keep resilient no matter what comes at you. And that's more what it's about than actually, you know, oh, I've solved all the problems. Aren't I brilliant? It's about kind of continuous learning and growth. And it's about how you be. I think the biggest thing for me was realizing it's not about doing, but it's how I want to be. So actually losing your job, being the best thing that ever happened to you, it's I'm a different person. It's not that I'm doing a different thing. I think I think differently. I think I've allowed myself to grow in a different way. I think that's what I see other people doing, not necessarily just a career change. I see. Beautiful. So thank you for, for outlining those five steps. Now, what I'd like to do is, is I want to actually have our audience here, our live audience, ask you a couple of questions. And so um, here's what I want you to do, folks who are live with us. And if you're listening in the podcast, please stay tuned because many of the questions which are going to be asked, we're, we're going to have people vote on the questions. And so the questions which we're going to ask are going to be ones which are re extremely relevant to our audience. So you'll see a Q&A box here on Zoom. Go ahead uh, um, on this Zoom Q&A box, post your question, and you can also vote up questions that you think are relevant to the audience. So feel free to post your question or vote up a question. Okay, now, the question that's leading is from Nova White. So Nova, I'd like to bring you up to directly ask your question to Eleanor. Nova, welcome, I'm gonna make you a panelist. Hi, Nova. Nova, you there? You can turn on your mic and camera. Good morning. Hi. Hi, um, Nova. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm so not prepared for all of this, but thank you so much for having me. One second. <laughs> um, my question was, or is, is I tend to have like a fear of missing out. I know what I want, so I overload on information as far as um, books, podcasts, everything to get all the information so I'm more the most prepared for whatever it is that I want to go and go after. And I find myself very overwhelmed. Yeah. So what is one thing that I could do instantly today to start working on a betterment? 
Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nova. I think we've all been there, and especially because we feel like we, we're solving it through information, don't mm -hmm. we? So we consume everything. I think it goes back to that and um, being really clear with yourself around your wants and your needs. And um, in the book, I call it a priority list. You spend just five minutes writing, right, what are my priorities today, next week, whenever? This is what I'm focusing on. Mm -hmm. And then you do the, the really disciplined thing, which sometimes is quite hard. And you say, OK, I'm about to sign up to this program. I'm about to buy another book. You just give yourself, it's the good old Mel Robbins five rule, five second rule. You just give yourself a little moment to go, hang on, is this going to contribute to where I want to get to? Or is it going to hold me back? And start kind of discipline yourself around that. That sometimes helps. But you don't need to lose any of that. I've got like a little postcard box. And every time I see something that I get a bit like a magpie, I think, oh, that looks good. I'll write it down and I'll put it in. So it hasn't gone. I'm just not doing it now. And I'll keep focused on my one thing for the day. So I, I really believe that if we kind of keep focused on, okay, I'm allowing myself one thing today and I know it's going to take me a step closer to where I want to get to, that starts to kind of help. But it takes practice, I think. So yeah, have a go at that. I'll do that. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Nova. Uh, we're going to bring up the, um, the person with the next question. Um, and the next person is Cameron. This is a really interesting question. Cameron, I'm going to bring you up. Cameron S. And have you asked this? This has to do with your feelings towards the person who made you redundant. Mm -hmm. Cameron, welcome. Hi, Cameron. Cameron. Feel free to turn on your camera. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, recently I was let go from a job uh, due to an injury, which was way out of, with, out of my control. Um, and obviously had a lot of time on my hands and obviously started doing Mind Valley. I want to know, though, when I'm doing, I'm doing the... Uh, the six phase meditation it talks about forgiveness and uh, there's a lot of things, but I'm trying to um, forgive the people who I lived with for three years, um, which was part of my job um, and forgive them for, even though I know it's not their choice to have let me go, but the companies, I still hold a lot of uh, sort of resentment and uh anger towards the situation even though I know it's out of my hands and it's led to it's led to actually quite some wonderful things um, but they're still in my practice of meditation or practicing sitting still and thinking about it it still comes up as a uh, as something and I'm trying to get over the whole situation um, so yeah mm. yeah tricky one so I think um, in the book I talk about revenge and like the bigger feeling of that which it doesn't sound like that's what you've got it's just this kind of feeling isn't it well, there's two things I would say to think about. One, really challenge yourself around, like, how is that thought serving you? Like, how yeah. is it helping you get your selfish head on and go, right, I'm going to start being really selfish here with my thoughts. And I'm only going to start thinking about things that could really help me move forward. Because it might be that you've got, um, you know, you still got things that you are playing with around your mind and you just can't get that closure. But if you can if you can't get it in any way, you, you know, you don't want to go back and close, close with them or talk about them anymore to get that closure. Think selfishly. And how mm -hmm. is it serving you to keep this rhetoric going through and through? And the other thing I'd say is acceptance. Mm -hmm. that sometimes we can't get rid of these things. You know, things happen and it'll always keep coming. But I get asked, you know, do, the person that sacked me that, you know, do you still think about them? And I think, well, yeah, they changed my life in in not a very nice way at the time. Of course, I mm. think that wasn't fair and all the rest of it. But acceptance that, okay, nothing I could do with it about it. And actually it's not helping me. So I'm gonna just kind of build things on top of it and actually move forward that way. So yeah, try and get selfish with your thinking. Okay, fair enough. No, no, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate the question. And we'll go to, go to our final question for today. Um, from our audience. And this is going to be from Elizabeth Cameron. So Elizabeth, this is a really, really relevant question about just facing reality. And I'd love to make you a panelist. Feel free to
turn your camera, Elizabeth. Vision, you also have the camera turned off still. I wanted to give the spotlight to Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, we need to turn on your mic. Yeah. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, so ultimate dream to be here with you. So that's just changed my day. Thank <laughs> you. Um, I, I, what I want to say is just about the real. I have uh, spent a lot of time, I'm actually doing Be Extraordinary at the moment and a couple of more Mind Valley programs because why do one when you're a VIP? <laughs> but <laughs> it's like, um, but this, I got made redundant by a church, like who was really doing some fantastic work for child, youth, and families work. I do a lot with young people. And I had so much energy to it. I'd gone over trying to do things in a, like a different way, like doing mm. things by Zooms and so on. But we couldn't meet each other. I couldn't do that practical work with them. And I just like, you know, I want to have these positive thoughts. I'm doing the extraordinary. But actually, the reality is the 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 dull thing here, you know, unemployment benefit, it's going to be £42 a week. My outgoings are 1700 a month. So I'm now on the third month. Next month, the repossession order will come. And like, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I like, I'm trying to do all these positive things. Mm. Don't think about it. Think about the good stuff. Concentrate on all the voluntary work. But, you know, actually reality, I, you know, what happens? How am I supposed mm. to get myself in a right state of mind when the predominant thought is just how do I survive? Yeah. You know? Oh, it's great. Thank you for sharing, Elizabeth. And I think a lot of people resonate with what you what you're sharing. I think that's where um, that piece of what do you need and what you want separate it out. And as I said, the my my book isn't about sort of it all becoming good overnight. It's about progression and kind of longer term progression and growth of how you want to be. And it might be that right now you just need to focus on okay i need to earn x amount by this point yes. to save and then just focus on that but the message is don't lose all your dreams all your wants all of that good stuff don't lose it because it's clear that you've done amazing things and you're going to be doing that again it might be that you just have to do something you will you will it might be that you just have to do something a bit different temporarily as a stepping stone but reframe it like that. Okay, for this year, all I need to do is go out and get a job and earn X amount. That's going to create this space that will just give you this time to get back on track, but never lose that dream and all the good stuff. Just don't lose it. It might be next year that it comes. It might be five years, but it will come back mm -hmm. to you. But for now, you've got to do what you've got to do and remember what your needs yeah. are. So remember that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Fisher. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I want to thank all of you guys for coming today to make our live call even more interactive and even more fun. And thank you, Eleanor, for all of you listening on the podcast. The book that we're talking about is called Why Losing Your Job Could Be the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You. Five Simple Steps to Thrive After Redundancy. Highly recommend it. And here's where you can learn more about Eleanor. Go to anotherdoor.co.uk. That's Eleanor's website, Door. .co.uk. When one door closes, another one always opens. So thank you so much. Eleanor, any closing words for our audience today? Well, all I want to do is just share that, you know, and whatever that inner voice is telling you, do it anyway, ignore it. Because a couple of years ago, I actually had a conversation with someone, I just lost my job. And I said, wow, I want to kind of get involved in Mind Valley and all that stuff. And it, you know, wouldn't it be amazing and just kind of had this, you know, weird dream about kind of being on a Mind Valley podcast. And the person laughed at me, of course. I'm still a nobody. I don't have big followers. I don't do big business or anything like that. And yet here I am talking to you on Mind Valley podcast. So my message is forget all that stuff. You don't need big numbers of followers. You don't need to be multi million pound business. Follow your dream. Keep your heart in a good place. Keep your head in a good place. And who knows what can happen. Thank you so much, Eleanor. And I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more with you and Mind Valley. Oh, thank you very much. That would be a pleasure. It's been a real honor. So thank you very much for having me.
Take care, everyone. Welcome to the Mind Valley Podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. I will see you next week.